was your Sunday. <laughs> I hope you guys had a good time. Those of you that uh, go to church, I go to church, so I just came back from church. And um, if you do not go to church, well, I just hope that your Sunday is beautiful. Um, I'd like to invite you to our program today. Um, today is going to be a very different one, <laughs> all right? It's very different because our guest is someone who I just ran into not long ago, you know, and then it was quite interesting. I ran into her video and I invited her to come and talk to us on the program and she obliged us. So I'm really very happy. So just go ahead and invite, you know how we do it. Let's go ahead and invite as many people as possible so that we don't get selfish. Like I always say, if you run into something good like this and you don't let other people know, then you are being selfish. Okay, so go ahead and invite um, everybody. Hey, Raphael, how are you, my brother? Shalom. How is your side? Hope everything is okay. Hmm? Good. Please go ahead and share this video. Let's invite everybody. And then, uh, <laughs> yes, so if I, you are the first person, I should give you the first prize, <laughs> Raphael. <laughs> you are the first person to come. Um, let's go ahead and invite and share the video as much as possible. What I discovered is that Facebook, for some reason, doesn't give a lot of notifications to people that you're connected to, you know, they want you to pay money, you know, so uh, we need people like you when you log on to just share the video because we don't know why. Um, oh, Adolf, you find me. Okay, you are the first. <laughs> All right, you didn't say anything, yeah, but but uh, <laughs> it showed me that Raphael came first. <laughs> oh, well, okay, no problem. Uh, Raphael said something first, but uh, Dauphin fired me. You were the first to sign in. So thank you so much, uh, Dauphin. I appreciate it so much. Um, guys, please go ahead. Let me also do the same housekeeping that we do. And then uh, place a call to, to our guest who is standing by uh, all the way in Nigeria. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. I trust, trust me if I tell you it's going to be interesting. It will really be an interesting one. Okay. Um, uh, my guest is right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to need my, 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 my cap today. I let me not forget. <laughs> you need to, you need to flip your screen. Uh, I'm talking to her now. You need to flip your screen. It, yeah, you need to be horizontal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, our guest is already... Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Take your time. We're inviting people now. Um, Let me... Give me one second, too. Just, just hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Do whatever you're doing. You need to let me do a little bit of housekeeping. guys imagine I, I i forgot my my beret so i had to go and uh, put it on because we are in a revolution mode so we need to all represent so guys uh, very soon you're going to be identified by um, your color we all see that orange is the color right now people keep asking me chidi what is the meaning of this orange beret that you're wearing i'm telling them that listen Orange is the color right now of our resistance. It's a, it's a revolution that has started all over the place. A passive resistance. Uh, you can wear red, you can wear another color, but you know, a lot of uh, cult groups in Nigeria have uh, resorted to wearing all kinds of colors. Some people wear red, some people wear black, some people wear all kinds of things. 
but we discovered that orange is kind of neutral. No, 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 no fraternity, no cult group will identify with orange now. So orange is the color of revolution now. So if you have not, <laughs> yeah, Raphael, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to change to orange. You have to wear your 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 own. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I really like to um, welcome all of you for coming today. Today we are discussing this Ruga settlement crisis. We are discussing it and the person that is going to be talking with me today is somebody who is so passionate about this thing that honestly, what I need to do, give me your phone, I need to play for you guys something that really made me become attracted to this uh, our special guest today. Um, uh, I'm going to play the video that she did, and this is the video that really, really got me um, interested in her. When you see this video, you will know the kind of person that we're going to be talking to today. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys ahead of time, there might be one or two network issues, you know, you know how the connection is. Uh, 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 between um, here and Nigeria. So um, if there is any network issues, I, I plead that you guys understand with us. It's not, it's not going to be my fault. It's not going to be her fault. So uh, we're going to be bringing her in very soon. But before I bring her in, let me play uh, a video for you guys so that you know the person that you're going to be... Uh, <laughs> Oh, Dolphin, you made a video about the Rogan nonsense too. Okay, that's good. But let me play this video for you guys. Just hold on. So this is this is the person that I have on the show today, guys. I want to introduce you people to the one and only Ada Baby. Put your hands together for Ada Baby. <laughs> All right, how are you, Ada Baby? How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ah, uh -huh. please, eh? Why were you so angry in that video? Let's start from there. Why are you so? What What made you so angry? Anyway, um, uh, 
I was so angry because, you know, the governor is from my place. Yes. Yeah. Of course, it's from my place. And bringing in legalization in my place, in a good state entirely, not only in my place, is not acceptable. <laughs> I was so angry because why would he accept that? That is, that is very interesting. Let me go back a little bit. Let's understand your background because I want to know wh what brought you to the point where you have become a revolutionary. By the way, I like your orange uh, beret. I see that you have caught the spirit of revolution. That's very commendable. Thank you very much. Now, <laughs> tell me, what, how, how, how did you come to the point where you are now a revolutionary. Tell me about your background. Anyway, um, I was born and brought up in the north. Oh. All right? I schooled there. Everything about my life was there. Hmm. I just left there not quite long. Hmm. I know how those people behave. I know how those ants men behave. They can do and undo. Mm. All right? We are living in a place in the north. Me not precisely. And the two many ends men as Ruga and not Ruga. They call it Ruga and not Ruga. All those both tell it is Ruga. Mm. But me showing our training on our western language is Ruga and not Ruga. Mm. We are at the back of our house. In the mm -hmm. And as I'm a said I could remember vividly when I was a child with my mother. My mom made a provision store. You understand me? Yeah. So, all the way, all the full and the ants men, they were there. They came to our shop. They bought smoke. They were smoking. Ogunona, Ogunini Mehanara, one there smoking, they were wine. The guy just came with anger. See, ah, Bali jump. A poor man. He and my wife get up. He still ain't come last week. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Ada, baby, we have uh, we have mixed yeah. we have mixed uh, audience. So a lot of our people. If you can just, uh, I know you are you are a conk Igbo girl and you don't like speaking English. Can you just uh, uh, you know? Do a lot of the interview in English so that they can follow, if you don't mind, please. Okay, it's okay. So, as I was saying, the guy now came to our shop. He was now angry. So, they started speaking their language, and the next thing, he brought out his cutlass and cut off the, the, the brother's ear. What? On the floor. Yes, I am telling you, and that, that is the reason why I was angry when I heard about what Uwai was about doing, or maybe he has already done it. I was so angry because they don't ask mercy on anybody, not even their self. Wow. This is what we are talking about. They don't eat cow. We are the one eating cow. I was angry because he really don't know what he's about bringing in in the United States entirely. It's not, it's not all about collecting money from them. No. It's not all about collecting money. But he don't know the implication of what he's 
about bringing in many states, not only in Africa, I'm speaking for all. Wow, that's interesting. You know, I had to ask you that question because I know the average, and I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I know that the average Enugu girl, you know, I grew up in Enugu, uh, I grew up in Osuka actually, and I know that the average girl who grew up in Enugu on Soka, well, it's not that they are not, um, they are not brave, or that they are not tough, but I knew there had to be something deeper that will make you sound the way you are sounding. And to hear that you grew up in the north and you grew up amongst uh, 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 these headsmen, it kind of um, opens our eyes and makes us understand why you behave the way you behave. Now, I, I, I've gone through your page. I have seen a lot of... Um, uh, I see that you 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 promote the Biafra uh, agenda a lot. You love Nam the Kano. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Where did that come from? Why are you why are you so um, inspired by Nam the Kano? Why are you you know you, you, all over your page? Everything about you is Biafra Biafra. Tell me about that. Where does that come from? and I can never be a Nigeria. Hmm. Yes. Because Nigeria has brought us a lot of bad men, both home and abroad. Yes, of course. So when Una Bikani came about this, moreover, yes, sir, I've been there even before I was born. You understand me? Yes. So my father and my uncle, they told me brief about what they face during their fall year. Alright? Yeah. So I got inspired. I was like, wow, that's to say I am not a Nigeria. So when I I had Inam Bikami speaking about Biafra, that was 2015. Moreover, I was in the North then. You understand me? So I I didn't get this impression on time. But I was loving what he was doing. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I started loving this thing. I started loving this Biafra. I started loving that. I said, yes, these people are my people. They are evil like me. But the so called Nigeria, Nigeria has brought us pain, suffering, and a whole lot of pain. Right? I understand. Even here, even here in Lagos, common Indian man, Indian man. Maybe you actually to go and get something for him. You're like, no, I don't trust you, I don't trust you. Nigeria, Nigeria, no, I don't trust you. Okay, what about those in abroad? So that is what inspired me because Nigeria has brought a lot of the rest and pain to us. Wow. Right? Like this evening, I went out this evening just because I was doing with my phone. I was actually charging my phone because of this program. Yeah. So I don't need to take my phone along with me. Yeah. So, something happened in my presence. I went to get something. This policeman stopped a young guy that was moving with her elder sister and dragged him into the bus without the guy doing anything, just because he pierced his ear. Uh -uh. Yes, I am telling you. This thing happened at our court today in Lagos, Nigeria, here. Yes, of course. So Nigeria has brought us a lot of pain. We don't need Nigeria. Not now and not and never. We don't need Nigeria. Okay. Now because Go ahead, continue, please. Continue. Go ahead. I am inspired because I'm an evil woman. Alright? If so if the Yesa finally becomes like USA and other places. I would prefer it. So at least, even if our brothers and sisters are going and traveling abroad, they will probably say that I am a Biafra. I'm not Nigeria. Because so many of my 
my brothers and sisters are out there suffering. My brothers are in cell, prison, just because of that passport. International green card. That is level Nigeria. He has doing a lot of pain. And that's the, that is the reason why I am fighting for this. And I am in for it, and I will never stop. Wow. No going back. No, no that, relate, no surrender. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, now, coming back to, to Ugwani's vid, uh, the video he did about the governor of uh, Enugu State, uh, uh, Governor Ugwani, what kind of reaction have you gotten from people? Because everybody, when I saw that video, the first thing I thought about was, oh my goodness, this girl, you're so bold. Are you not afraid? Are you not thinking that uh, people will come and attack you? So what kind of reaction have you gotten because of that video that you did? I understand i understand anyway see let me tell you something um uh based on what you have said let me just tell you that um i am i live in a place i live in a country canada where i live it's a free society it's a place where people's freedom is highly respected uh you have a right to express yourself and um whether you're being respectful or disrespectful the most somebody can do is if they feel that um, 
what you have said is not right, if they feel offended, they can do a video against that. They can do their own video. They can put a response out there. So what you have done is that you have just expressed yourself. And then um, while, while you are bold and you can put a video out there, some other people feel the same way you're feeling, but they are not able to put it out like that. Okay, so that's just what it is. If anybody feels anything about it, they can do their own video. Um, guys, we just posted a link of uh, that video up there that she did. We 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 publi we 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 hosted the video too on our YouTube channel, so you guys can click and see it. And then you can also go to her page. Her page is um uh, at that baby. Uh, we're going to put up a link to her page too, so you can go to her Facebook page and you can see all the things that she she says. She's really a very very um, <laughs> hot-headed uh, lady, hot-headed in a, in a in a revolutionary way. All right. So let me now ask you. Let me ask you this this question. What as okay. some as somebody who has uh, okay now the, the link is up there. As somebody who has lived in the north, tell me, yeah. do you? Do you think that everybody in the North is a bad person? Do you hate everybody in the North? Or tell me what is your, tell me the area of this whole program that you hate. So that I want to understand whether I, do you just hate everything North? Or do you, tell me how, um, how you feel about the Ruga thing. I want to focus on which part of this whole thing is really making you angry. Because people will just think that, Oh, you're anti-North, you don't like North uh, Northerners and all of those kind of things. Okay. I can say I hate uh, Northerners because there are so many languages there. They have UK, they have Kipa, they have Katop, they have uh, um, Magi, so many languages in the North, right? I can say that I hate everybody or I hate the Northerners, no. But the two money ends there right now are the perpetual problem we are having now. Two money ends men have made the main answer, which is Kaduna Kano, Katina, all those places. They make them to feel as if they are bad people. They make them to feel as if they are having, let me just put it this way, as if all of them are the same. Everybody mustn't be the same, all right? Even here I'm staying, I have a lot of outsiders around me. I have the ones of uh, Kaduna, Kano here, you understand? And they are good people, all right? So, yes, sometimes I relate with them so that I can know their outcome. I will ask them some questions. Let me know what is going on there. Because I've never revealed myself to them that I'm an evil person. You wow. Because I want to know. Yes. I never revealed myself as an evil lady to them. I told them that I am an Aosha. The reason why I did so is because I want to know their intention towards the evils. You understand? Then, the Aosha man was then in kind of saying that there is a man called Nandi Kano. I said, not Kano, it's Kano. <laughs> he said, Nandi Kano. I said, no, it's not Kano. It's Kano. You should look at it. So that man will lie, that man. Kai! Kareti Gareshi Ba. Will lie to lie, not even to the Kima Allah. Kareti Gareshi Ba. Ah, not yet. Yeah, they. They will not say that that man is a very, very strong man. That he wish that this Nigeria would go to bread because what they are going to give the people is no good. I was like, wow, I feel like picking point there. I stay with the ISAF, I stay with the Tlanis. The ISAF that I stayed with, they are very nice people. But I don't know the ones that other people have stayed with. I'm talking, I'm talking about my own part. But in the Fulani case, Fulani are not good people. They are not good people. I cannot say they yeah, are, all of them are not good. But the ant men are not good people. They can kill. Hmm. But if you want to say, they will say, uh, when we say, uh, well, I'll suffer money. 
That's how our people do put it. I will say Fulani. What is the Maka? Namde, Fulani, the Fulani and Slay. Nakuzuzuli, Indiawusa, Bathe. Okay, let me let me let me explain what you're let, let me explain what you're saying. What you're saying is that um you stand in the north, you you, you because when we say north, it's not just our uh, Fulani people. There are so many tribes, yes. just like you have said now. Uh, and and you can speak Hausa so fluently. And um I also have a lot of people who are Hausa people. But it looks like this the, the, the problem is that the, the Fulani headsmen, especially they are after dominating everybody. They are armed, and you are, according to you now, they are the ones that are spoiling the regular house man. The Fulani uh, uh, headsmen are bringing bad name to the house man and other northerners. Are there some other northern languages that you can speak? Yes, I can speak Nupi. Okay, can you say say something in Nupi? Wow. 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 Is there another language, another language in the north again that you can speak? No. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, I needed to point this out because I know that a lot of people from the east are living in the north and they are living peacefully. And one thing that, this is my personal opinion about this Ruga thing. My personal opinion is that if we need to have a Ruga settlement in, a, in the East or West or other places, then that means we would have to have um, a rice settlement for people from Abakliki. You have to do rice settlement. Now you have to do, for people in Delta, and people in the River Rhine area who fish, you have to open colonies in the north for them because fishing is not only by the river. You can do fish pond for them. So are we going to do fish pond for people who are doing fishing? So what about people who plant cocoa in the west? That means we have to open cocoa plant for them too. You have to give us different colonies. Some people have argued that, uh, um, but let me hear. Let me hear what you have to say about the Ruga colony itself. Let's talk about the Ruga colony that uh, some people, some governors have said, let it be established. I want to hear your opinion before I finish with my own opinion. Okay, okay. You know, let me say um, about you know, I reacted about wine. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The reason why I reacted like that, I. Did not just react because I'm from the same stage from the Togai. I'm reacting because we have other governors in other states. Because the reason why I'm saying this is that the full and the ends men, they know the four corners of your your I mean your farmland, they know the four corners of your villages which you don't know. That's right. Yes. They know the full corners of the villages which you don't know. And one need to be careful. One need to be careful. You can't bring those people in. Okay, well, what is the name of this uh, governor? Um, from uh, what is it called? Uh, River. River State. River, is yes. Wiki. Wiki. Yes. Wiki. Is it not as any farmland to give to anybody? <laughs> it can only give them water. <laughs> is it not a But, but uh, he's a governor, my dear. But Uguay, I did Uguay say that he's giving them land already? I thought he was just apologizing. He no, he don't need to apologize to them. Why should why, why, will, why will he apologize to them for? He wants to apologize to them for killing our people or what? Is he apologizing to them, telling their congratulations for killing my people? Or, is it what he's trying to do? So he should not have come. He, no, should, he shouldn't have. Uh, he... Yes. Why? Oh, yes. Why? They have killed our people. They have killed our people. So we, they don't need or 
need or deserve an apology. They deserve it. They are wicked. And no, no. If Uta wants, wants to give them any land, I think he should give them in, in, his, in his own house. <laughs> you know, he should give them in his own house, you know that. And you are from the same local government as the as the governor. <laughs> I'm from the local government, yes. Wow. All right. Um. Thank you so much, Ada, Ada, baby, Ada Biafra. Um. I really wanted to have you on our program, and I contacted you, and I'm so glad that you honored our invitation. And uh, so, what do you advise people to do? How can people, what do you advise them to do about this Ruga settlement? What do you advise them? What I'm advising, more especially the youth. You understand me? Yeah, I'm advising the youth. Ordinarily, nothing is going to happen if you keep being scared of those people. They will take you for a ride. And take someone taking with the youth for a ride. Oh yes, I saw the case down here. Oh, you know, Yes, I don't care about it. I don't care about it. Can you translate? Can you, can you, can you, can you translate that word, please? Just. <laughs> Okay, let me let me help you. What you're saying is that if you if you respect the king, respect the king. Sometimes yourself, you just carry a basket and cover the king's head because because he's misbehaving. If the king is misbehaving and you're just respecting, him, one day you just carry a basket and cover his head. <laughs> All right, uh, we understand. We understand. No, what I'm understand. trying to say here, what I'm trying to say here, is that in every villages. Before, before I... Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let me, somebody here asked a question uh, before I let you go. They asked whether, are you facing any threats from anybody apart from uh, the two people that you mentioned? They want to know whether you're feeling threatened, whether you're feeling any security threat? Is there anybody disturbing you? Did somebody ask that question? They want to know. All right. No one can even threat me because <laughs> they can threat myself. Yes. I don't know what she is. It's not a laughing matter. It's plain. 
I know, I know. Yes. No I know. one can trust me because you don't know how I came into this world. Hmm. Everybody in life has a fiction. Yes. No one can trust me because I'm a threat myself. It's just I'm a threat, Charlie. <laughs> back to back edge. Like I'm there, man. Oh, yes. Fire for fire. <laughs> okay. I don't be a human. I don't be a friend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ada Biafra. Thank you, Ada Baby. Uh, we'll continue to, to support you. Please, when next we have another tough, uh, another tough uh, topic to talk about, and we we'll reach out to you, please always uh, answer us, okay? And uh, we'll continue to share. Continue doing, continue doing what you're doing. I don't want you to be fearful. As long as you speak the truth, nothing will happen to you. And um, a lot of people. A lot of people are being inspired by what you do. A lot of young people, uh, you see this revolution now that we are doing um, from everywhere. Uh, I'm from the Take It Back movement and uh, so many other movements. People are getting wise. People are ready for the revolution. We are saying no to to the government. Saying no to everybody, pastors, anybody who is messing up. We are all saying no to them. So thank you so much. Uh, Ada, Ada baby, Ada Biafra. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so, thank you so much for that uh, orange beret. I like it so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, bye bye bye. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, yeah. So. That was um, Ada Biafra. Wow, a very tough lady. If we had uh, a lot of uh, Nigerians, a lot of uh, young people like that, I'm telling you, would have gone so far. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I was surprised when I ran into her, and man, I was so shocked. She was so bold. She talked. And you see, you. When I saw, I had hope in our youth. I said, wow, so it's not every youth that is really useless. You know, I was, I, that's what I keep saying. I'm just shocked at the kind of boldness that she has. And, and she speaks her language. If, if you understood Igbo, not just Igbo, but if you understand a little bit of Nsoka, you will enjoy her more because she goes down to her roots and she speaks her language. And yet, she understands uh, Hausa, she understands Fulani, she's lived in the north, she lives in Lagos. She's uh, such a very great person and we are glad that she was able to be on our program today. Uh, guys, continue to share the vision of the, uh, the orange beret. I would like to explain to you guys that the orange beret represents uh, the symbol of our resistance right now. I don't care what you believe, where you belong, whether your religion, your tribe, your affiliation, political affiliation or whatever, we are all going orange. We are going orange to show the government that we are tired, honestly. Whether you're Biafra, whether you're Dudua, whether you're Take It Back movement, whether you're Christian, Muslim, wherever you are, as long as you are connected to that entity called Nigeria, we are resisting the government and we are telling them that enough is enough. Enough is enough. It's going to be passive resistance. It is not being organized by any organization or affiliated to anybody. It is just a way of we telling the government that enough is enough. And so that's why you're going to be seeing me wearing this orange beret. You're going to be seeing a lot of people wearing this orange beret. And we're going to use it to protest. We're going to use it to, to speak up until we dismantle uh, the oppression that our people are facing in Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining in from wherever you are all over the world. And next time when we come up, when we come on from Worship Media, please continue to listen to us. Thank you so much. This is Chidi signing out.